Hi, S tries here. This guy right here is a regular AC powered stand fan. So you can see it runs off and AC wire goes into the motor. And this means that you cannot use it for a portable application unless you have an inverter of some sort. So today I'm going to show you how to convert this fan right here into a DC motor fan. So this is a very cheap DC motor fan that I got off AliExpress. It has the parts machine out so you can fit the motor easily. And today I'm going to guide you through the steps on how to... Right, so here's an example of the fan that's used in the stand fan, the motor. And it also comes with this um, attachment here that allows the motor to pivot around. I got this motor online for 15 bucks for this demonstration and presentation. And we'll be converting this AC motor into a DC motor that looks something like this. But first off, we, what we are going to remove is this. One special thing about this is that it uses ball bearing instead of bushing. Bushing is like this motor right here. It uses a bushing. Now we're gonna remove the um, screws. We have four screws here that is gonna be taken out to reveal the insides of the motor. And just take the whole assembly out. Ooh, the bearing comes out on its own. So you can see that it rotates very smoothly. The one that attaches the cables to here. We're also going to remove this capacitor since we don't really need it anymore. And the whole thing can just come out of this assembly nice and smooth. So for our motor, we don't really need the bearing anymore because where to put the bearing? So we can remove this bearing here, this shaft right here and just take a little hammer. Get your motor and bend the wires to the side so that it wouldn't touch the metal body of the um, heat shrink of the fan cover. This is the front of the motor chassis and you always want this part to be pointing down the back side of the motor. Adjust it until this point is the downwards part. So you can see this is facing upwards, this is downwards, the oscillation part. So take a look at this. Remember this sign, this is facing up. Now get your motor wires and fish it through one end, the bottom end of the um, motor housing, the openings, and just align it at an angle. Do not align it like this because it may short out. It's just align like this, the wires are protruding outwards. And make sure that the shaft doesn't mesh, doesn't collide with the um, aluminium. Make sure the thread actually goes in first. Then you start turning the screw. Just one turn or two turns will be enough. One, two. One, two. One, two. And the current still it doesn't change much. So it's good. The motor does fit in nicely now. So this is what you want at the end. If it's too tight for you, do the same thing again. One, two, like this. And it should still stay perfectly center. If it's not center, readjust it. And now you can attach your plant the worm gear system. This one you can use the electric power tool because this one you just need to make sure it's tightened it up inside. Well. And yeah, that should be it. This is the fan assembly, as you can see here. There is a fan here. I'm going to disconnect the... Alright, so we are going to compare the sizes of these two threads. And you can see that the, the starboard one is slightly shorter. So I'm just going to get a marker and trim it down to the second last thread. Alright, so using the Dremel method actually does work. You can see that it has shortened to somewhat around the size of the 
one that's given by the manufacturer. So it's definitely very awesome. And now finally I can secure everything in place. Okay. <clears throat> Try to power it on the motor and see what happened. Low voltage, by the way. Perfect. So everything is working fine. So now let's attach it to the main frame of the fan. Alright, so the seller also included a bunch of accessories that came with it. Not only the this one right here, it also included some cable kind of like connect connectors, I guess. Cable connectors, yep. So I'm going to refer to Negative as ground because ground is also another way to describe a negative connection. So we're just gonna connect this to the the common common wire of the speed controller. So this means the zero speed speed position like this. Then just guide the wire through the heat shrink and fully connected and now we're gonna put it on the fan. Alright, so the fan has been attached to it. I'm just gonna put everything back together. All the controls and all the wirings. I'm just gonna put them nicely together and we'll jump cut. There you go. That's the modification. Looks pretty cool, right? Here's the battery. The voltage is a lithium iron phosphate battery. So it goes in through the back of the connector, just like how the normal fan does. So this one, I can just actually take it out from this one because I don't really need it since I have the remote controller. I'll just put it back in. So I double-sided the tape using a 3M tape. And to turn it on, just press the number one button. Other buttons doesn't actually work. You have to press the number one. And you can see it automatically switches to 4 because it's set 50-50. To set it uh, correctly, we can use the remote controller and just change the speed. Personally, I won't recommend going above 80% because um, when you go above 80%, the motor wires will spark. The motor armature. And that is really bad for the motor slice pan. So I can cycle through the different speed. Actually quite strong at eight. So right here we have two graphs. The first graph shows the RPM versus power consumption, whereas the second graph shows the speed versus power consumption. At higher speed, the motor power consumption increased drastically due to the effect of increase in new drag on the rotor of the fan blade. As the fan increases in speed, the drag also increases. So thus, the motor needs to have more power in order to turn the fan at a higher speed. So that's why your fan power consumption significantly rises. Right, so the average power consumption of this fan for the whole night, that is 8.5 hours on average. It's around 53 watt hours that is significantly lesser than regular stand fans. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you would give this project a try. It's a very amazing it's remote control. It's simple, you can run it on batteries. It's very cool. So, hope you enjoy watching this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.